Hi, I'm Mary Pohl, your host for the Sales Mastery Summit. Tell me, do you know how to identify your customers' true motivations? You know, the ones that they don't share with anyone else? Today's expert has turned reading between the lines into a science that anyone can use to connect better with your customers and motivate them to take action. With me today is Kevin Allen, author of The Hidden Agenda. Welcome, Kevin. Well, hi. Thanks. It's great to be here. Well, I'm excited about your topic because it's really a game-changing topic for our viewers today. A lot of sales professionals are toiling over how to create a value proposition that really resonates with their customers. And adding the aspect of the hidden agenda to it is a whole new addition to that work. So I'm excited to jump right in. And to start with, can you share with us what exactly is the hidden agenda? Well, I'm delighted to do so. The hidden agenda is... Well, let's put it this way. Behind every decision of any kind, whether it's for uh, to hire a company to buy a $300 million aircraft engine, to for a, for a loan officer to give you a loan, it doesn't matter. Behind every decision is a human being with a desire. The unspoken, emotional, visceral motivation behind that decision. So targeting that, understanding it, and connecting with it is a way to win. Fabulous. And so it would seem like a gift that some people have to be able to connect with and, you know, as I said, behind the lines or, you know, I guess see past the words that are spoken. Um, so how do you turn that into a science that really anyone can do, whether they were born with it or not? Ah, uh, that's interesting. I, my mother used to kid me. She used to say, well, when, you, when they're handing out brains, you miss the announcement. Ha, ha, ha. You know, but she used to say, but you are my most sensitive child. No. The fact is, everybody is sensitive. Everybody has an ability to, to connect with people on an emotional level. I think it's a question of turning, on our, turning up our emotional radar. When I was coming up in the business, it was this notion that, well, you're now in the business world, so it's all about the facts and all about the figures and all about, and somehow emotional things, human things, were kind of, well, that's what you did in your spare time. But the fact is, in business, the decisions have an even greater, greater emotional consequence. You think of someone who's in charge of their company, believe me, that's just emotional. So understanding what that is, I think, is the key to making a connection and ultimately making a sale. It doesn't seem like even coming from your advertising agency background, it doesn't seem that that notion is, is popular, even when it comes to advertising, when you think of the approach for a business to consumer campaign versus business to business, you know, it has to be all facts and specs for the B2B, but in fact, you know, there's still a human being making that buying decision. It's so interesting you say, because the same people who made a profession of understanding the human motivation behind, you know, buying a can of soup <laughs> would not apply that in their own business to business environment. And I remember being in a conference room, we're coming back from a meeting with the, for the, for the prospective client. And say, okay, now let's show him the Coca-Cola case. So let's show him. And I'm sitting in the room going, I think he's scared. And the whole room goes, what? <laughs> like, oh, here he goes again with the emotional stuff. And I remember a fellow by the name of Mike McCartan going, wait, 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 wait a second. Let's listen to this kid. He wins. I don't really think I understand it, but let's listen to what he has to say. And, and it began a process of us of us institutionalizing the, the, the method of understanding the hidden agenda, which led to every time we would pitch, we would go through this exercise. Okay, and I was just going to ask, so how do you systematically define a hidden agenda? Well, I think the first thing comes from the way that you uh, search for it. So that's the first thing. Now, obviously, in many, many instances, you have a chance to meet with your prospect, and in that meeting, is a fantastic opportunity to ask the right set of questions to begin to unearth the hidden agenda. The funny part of it, though, is my mom used to say, if you ask a silly question, you get a silly answer. If you ask a functional question, you get a functional question. Answer so very often, we go into the meeting, so tell me about your market share issues. Tell me about blah, blah, blah. What about, what keeps you up at night? How do you think your people feel at the moment about where your company is? What do you dream about this firm being five years from now? Now, that is a million questions. You notice the tonality and difference in that question. I guarantee you the dialogue is going to be different. No, it still means 
that you're going to have to ask, ask the professional questions. But the wonderful thing is now these professional questions are being asked within the context of the ambition and the desire of the person who's making a decision. Believe me, it makes a big difference in where that conversation can go. Then you take all the results of those questions back to your, to your strategy moment, it's what I call pursuit strategy, and begin to ask yourselves, what is the hidden agenda? What do we think this person's about? Is he forward-leaning? Is this decision based upon ambition? Okay. Is it backward-leaning? Maybe, maybe there's concerns or something the person's worried about. Or maybe the person is driven by value, but you can agree on that, but that's the first part. The second part is connect yourself to it, because who you are and what you're about is the other half of this equation. Beautiful. So you say forward-leaning and backward-leaning, and I was curious if body language played a role in uncovering the hidden agenda, because you know we learn how much is conveyed and communicated via body language but the um, how to interpret isn't necessarily always there. So I would imagine that that is a, a big revealer of the hidden agenda. Oh, Mary, you're right. In fact, I remember going into a conference room. It was for, a, a, I think it was Johnson & Johnson. And we get in the room, and the man sort of, a little like this, and uh, I said, right away, I said, so how do you, how, how do you feel about the, the interviewing process with all the ad agencies? And his reply, I'd rather have root canal. <laughs> So right away, I can see to your point, the body language says, I'm not enjoying this. So then there's a process called laddering, which goes part, the other part of the answer to your question, how to find it, is once you see some evidence of an emotional uh, uh, sort of motivation, you can begin to peel away the layers. So I said, well, well, why do you feel that way? He said, well, I, you know, I, uh, this is a tedious process. Laddering says, keep probing. Well, what is it about this process that makes it so tedious? To which he replies, if I have one more kid, tell me how screwed up my business is, I'm going to commit homicide. <laughs> now, what that told me is, this man's about results. He wants us to give him the answer. He's searching for the answer. So even in that meeting, it's called reading the room, we switch the dialogue to say, you know what? Let's take a possibility inventory in terms of what kind of things you've got going that really look interesting for the future. Watch the body language. Whoop! This guy was into it. Because it wasn't about us frying him on the griddle. <laughs> about yeah. The yeah? You're right. This body language could be a big clue. And then taking that cue to ask the questions that you said to really get at what are the emotions or feelings going on. And it doesn't have to be a kumbaya conversation. It's still uh -huh. a business conversation. I am so glad you mentioned that. Because I often say, you know, this isn't a kumbaya thing. Because ultimately, this process, once you've begun to identify this emotional need state, then the other half of the work has to begin. That is to connect yourself, what you are about, and the product and services you represent to say, have I got good news for you? So let's take this fellow, for example. By understanding the hidden agenda, in this particular case is, my business is in trouble and I'm worried about it. That's what was really going on there. Now, he's not going to sit there. How many people in a business meeting, when you show up, you're going to go, so, it's nice to meet you, sir, and could you tell us, madam, about your business? Oh, my God, I'm terrified. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to do that. But the fact is, they may well be. Or, in the case of Sandy, remember Sandy Wilde from Citigroup, that was about ambition. But he wasn't going to say, I want everybody to know what I've built. You've got to kind of figure that out. But once you do... That is like electricity. But, um, so that's the first half. But the second half is then realizing there are several ways for you to connect to that. And that's part of the process as well. Okay. Can we dive into that? Then how do you connect once you discover that? So I like your example because um, the gentleman you referred to obviously is inviting people in because his business is in trouble and needs help. Right. But he's sick of everyone saying your business is in trouble and needs help. You know, he already knows that and lives with that every day. So... You know, Absolutely. get to something that is worth his time. Absolutely. So in that particular instance, there are a few ways uh, to connect to the hidden agenda. But I think the most important thing is celebrating who you are. You know, it's so interesting. When I was coming up in the business, I kind of thought, okay, Kevin's a kid from the wrong side of the tracks. You know, he hasn't got the perfect this and the perfect degree and blah, blah, blah. So when I get in a business situation, I want to be sure they think I'm a professional. So I became sort of perfect man. And the problem with 
perfect man is, apart from the fact that it's very, very hard to maintain, there is no emotional human connection that can come from that. Be yourself in all its glory. You, to, to make a human connection with an individual's hidden agenda is to let it go. Now, one of the things that starts with that, there are three things I think you connect to the hidden agenda with. One is what I call real ambition. The other is what I call credo. And the third is core. So start with core. Core is the great glory of who you are and what your special skills are. Now, it's true, your competitors have some of the stuff you have, but nobody on this planet has it in your combination. Yeah? So it may be, for example, when we pitched MasterCard, it was a question that our culture at McCann was a very competitive winner's culture. That was our core. So to connect to a group whose hidden agenda was to win over Visa, it was demonstrating, you know, we use, we use kind of fun language like, you know, there's nothing we like more than a good fight. We don't lose. It was a way of them going, yeah, okay, I see where you guys are coming from. Or taking a technical aspect of our experience, for example, representing Coke versus Pepsi or AT&T versus MCR. But that hard sort of case was pitched in the context of this emotional need, which is we don't lose and I have reasons to prove that we don't. So you can see how you connect physical uh, characteristics to that emotional state. Now, real ambition is great for someone who's forward-leaning, which is we dream of dot, 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 or we will. Nothing connects to a, a, a hidden agenda of possibility like that. So, for example, um, South African Airways. It's just a fantastic pitch involving people who we realized the hidden agenda of that pitch wasn't show us advertising for an airline. It was that this airline represents the aspiration of our country. Wow. So this was our sharing our same, same ambition uh, and then seeing that we have the same sort of desire for a future that they do. And when people connect with that, they're like, wow, you know, whenever someone gave me the business, you know what they used to say? You know, that dinner, I'd go and say, all right, why'd you give me the business? They'd say, because you get it. Like, get what? <laughs> That's the what. Yeah. Now, the third one, I used to think there were just two, you know, based upon... Uh, ambition or, or need, but it is a third, and it's based on values. And, you know, the hidden agenda of value is based upon the, the company's deep belief system. Now, I came up the hard way, as I mentioned, I worked for, um, at the Marriott Corporation, putting myself through college, and wouldn't you know, a kid mopping floors 15 years later, I'm flipping through the paper of Adweek, and there is Marriott shops for agencies. Oh my God, can you imagine pitching, well, I wrote the letter, and the thing about that letter, because, you know, everybody's out there cold calling, you know, I, I, the 100-pound telephone, I used the hidden agenda in the letter by saying the following, we, like you, believe in the nobility and honor of service, that service is not servitude, it's an honorable calling. Sent that letter. Now, you know these, le these letters you send, like four pages of, and our experience, and blah, 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 and it goes right in the shredder. Right? I'm so great, yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> So I phoned up the secretary, of course, the next day, and she said, you quoted Grandpa. I quoted the founder, Mr. Marriott. So that connection was made, you get it. You get the things that we value. And later, we went on to pitch the business and put together a notion called the spirit to serve, which ignited the room. We went on to win the business, and Mr. Marriott eventually used that as the name of his, of his book. So you can imagine how proud I am of that, needless to say, as a former floor mopper. But so, so real ambition, credo, and core, three great ways to connect to a hidden agenda. And Kevin, would you say that any of them um, rises up as more important, or is it really situation dependent or person dependent? It's really interesting, because I think, I'd safe to say they're all kind of present in some, I mean, it's just, if, if someone, I think it's predominant. It's sort of like you're either left-handed or right-handed, I mean, one of those things is going to be dominant in that particular situation. It doesn't mean for a moment I, I'm, I, that if you're targeting the notion of the value system that someone doesn't have an ambition. Of course they do. But I think as you sit in that room, something's going to jump out and be the driver behind, behind that decision, and therefore you could choose of the way of connecting to that. So is there such thing as getting at a hidden agenda for a committee? 
because so many sales professionals have to sell, you know, consensus to a consensus decision making group and how do you get through that because there's a lot of individual hidden agendas going on. Yes. Uh, the funny, you know what, it, it, it is the Marriott's a good example, funny enough, because I, right away my dear friend Jackie comes to mind when I think of Jackie. But one of the things to do is you develop a hidden agenda that you believe is driving the organization at large. Um, but but it, individuals coming to that room have very different interests. So when you're listening, when you're in that room asking questions of individuals, and by the way, make sure you include everybody. I have a client of mine uh, who, who had a review recently for an ad agency, and the youngest member of the team, a committee of eight, said to the group, including the chairman, because this kid was involved in the, in the review, um, do you know that man didn't look at me the entire time? Guess what? They didn't get the business. So everybody in that room is important. I don't care who they are. So I'm, we're asking the questions, and Jackie is kind of, I can see out of the corner of my eye, this is what I say, reading the room, let your, observe your, your people. She says, she mutters to lay, this is all fine, but I'm the one that has to get it done, she says. Now, while everybody's talking about spirit to serve and positioning, but Jackie, she's, her hidden agenda is a whole other thing, because when all these people finish, focuses on her. What I told the team is, it's like a restaurant. You've got to have food, something for everybody. <laughs> so in Jackie's case, we still delivered the notion on spirit to serve, but it said, the spirit to serve, the first hundred days. So when Jackie, so, so everybody else is loving the, 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 the strategies. Big idea. She went, they listen to me. They respect me. So the idea is profile everybody in that room, even though you know that there's an overarching one, try to figure out, this, what you think um, is going on for everybody, which means if you're in a circumstance for the first time, make sure you ask a question of everybody in the room. You know, we always, one of the mistakes I used to make is, you know, well, the decision maker is the important person. Not always. Fabulous. I think you um, give an example, too, of, you know, sometimes the motivation is, will this get me the promotion I'm after? And so that's really what you're playing into. Yes, I, you know, I think it's really interesting. When I think of, I'll give you a little anecdote because I, I put it in the book as well. It's one of my favorites. So I was in my late 20s and, I, you know, I just was so, if I, if I, the idea that people might find out that I'm a, bit of a, I'm a bit of a goofy guy and I like fun and I'm a bit, that I wasn't the perfect businessman who reads Wall Street Journal every day and I love Wall Street Journal, but I mean, but, so I'm being my perfect man and, and I'm in a presentation inside the agency. And in walks the chairman of the company, Bill Gensch, World War II fighter pilot, shot down, escapes. I mean, this man was a absolute icon. We adored him. I had never met him. Comes in the room. He's watching me present. Now I'm going into Mr. Perfect Overdrive. And at the end of it, he comes up to me and he says, you know, son, that was really one fine presentation. Can I give you some advice? I went, yes. He says, why don't you step out from behind that suit, son, and let him get a good look of who you really are. And if you do, you're going to go places. So letting that go is so wildly important, and it was the best advice I, I, ever get, I ever got from anybody. Well, I love that if you're not vulnerable yourself, you can't expect somebody else to expose their vulnerabilities to you. So, right. you know, that right. is how you get at their hidden agenda. You do, because at the end of the day, this is a human decision, and most circumstances, I mean, we live in a world of, of parity product, I mean, there are many, many fine products. You know, 1955, maybe you could have a toothpaste that, you know, gets rid of cavities better than the other one. But arguably, there's a lot of very fine products out there. And the differences become, you know, is Rolls-Royce engine as good as GE's? I imagine so, although I imagine my, my, my Rolls-Royce client would argue otherwise. But at the end of the day, if you ask any person who's making a decision to hire somebody, they would admit they hired the team. They hired the people they met because they trust, they get me, they get my objective, they connected with me, and they had something special that connected with what I needed. And you have to have that credo match. Yes. Oh, my God. Absolutely. In fact, but interestingly you say that because um, very often I counsel my clients in terms of your prospecting activity is to apply this process to develop your prospect list. So, for example, you say to yourself, you know, 
let's talk about creative. I love what you just said because you can say, God, I would love to have that company. But do they share your value system? If they don't, you can get them in a room. You know, I'm a pretty good cold caller, but you get them in a room and you're going to just sit there going, I don't think I like these people. <laughs> you know, and they're certainly not going to get me. You know, so that can, that, that can apply pretty far upstream in terms of figuring out, I call it closable prospects. It's the idea that that person could be your client before you've ever met them because of applying this kind of screening criteria. I mean, you know the functional criteria. They're big enough, they've got the money, they're interested in the product, blah, 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 blah. But then I apply this sort of a hidden agenda criteria and say to myself, okay, so they've got a real ambition that matches with ours. You know, we're, this is, we're on a similar kind of journey here. My core, yeah, boy, I mean, that would be perfect. And it says, all right, in the given day, I can only make so many calls. Who's it going to be? It's going to be them. Yeah, I would imagine that even the people that make it through your pipeline, I would bet the worst customers that people have to deal with are because there's a mismatch in credo. And so they're high maintenance. They're just a thorn in your side because you don't match there. There's no question about it. I've watched so many, um, you know, advertising agency relations, of course, the business that I originally came from. Um, you know, even if the decision was made, I could see it that that relationship, I used to say to my colleague, you know what, I'll give that relationship a year and they'd be back out on the trail looking for another firm again. So you're absolutely right. So Kevin, you've shared with us some great tips on how to find or identify the hidden agenda and then connect um, to it. Do you also have tips on then um, how do we speak to it or, you know, make sure that our story's matching up? Absolutely. I, I think that what I, I love to say to people is imagine Whatever profession you're in, of course, might be, might be talking to lawyers, so this will apply even better. But when you go to make a case as a lawyer, right, you have to put together a brief. And I think they use the word appropriately because a brief means you have distilled your argument. So most presentations of what we're trying to sell tend to be linear. You know, I'm not pleased to be here, and this is the background, and here's the issues, and therefore, blah, 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 blah. Imagine you argue like a lawyer in a, in a court, like a courtroom drama. I don't know. I grew up with Perry Mason. That's probably dating me. <laughs> you know, where they sort of go and let, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that my client had to commit the crime because she wasn't there. Now, ha, huh, and then they submit evidence. Now, the point of that is a compelling articulation in connection to the hidden agenda is based upon that core argument, which you state as a summary at the beginning of your argument, and interestingly enough, it contains the essence of the hidden agenda argument. So when we did MasterCard, for example, on the screen were the words carpe diem, and my colleague got up there and said, ladies and gentlemen, we have found what we believe to be the opportunity for you to connect with an entire community of people who will love you, and we're going to show you how. Now, if I'm sitting there going, I don't think I can win against these, but these people are telling me Carpe Diem sees the day. I've got news you can. I'm going to listen to the rest of that show. The other piece is that, therefore, the things that you present aren't merely product features. They're evidence. Evidence number one, a shift in societal values. Let me show you that. And that's one of the reasons number one as to why. So it becomes a very, very exciting um, sort of case that you're making. And of course, always remember the summary. You know, I've watched a million presentations, sales presentations, where it sort of goes, well, okay, that's it. <laughs> like, wait a minute. And Questions? You know, you're right. <laughs> so of course we know about close the sale, but I would take it one step further that it's sort of like the, like the, the summary or the summation in a court case, in which case you're restating. So let's take South African Airways. So the example I spoke of earlier, you know, we believe like you that now is a lifetime opportunity to connect the value systems of this country, the country we want to create with this wonderful airline in every way, shape and form that we market and the way that we behave. And I've shown you four ways that we're going to do that. So you can see how I summarized my argument based upon the hidden agenda. I've connected our product. And I've given the evidence that I've, support, that I've provided as a summary. Because, you know, people are logical. 
You know, you know that thing. What's it called? Syllogism. You know, if if birds can fly and 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 wings make you fly, therefore birds can fly. That summary is this irrefutable logic, but all connects back to the hidden agenda and how you connect to it. Okay. Excellent. So, Kevin, is there some place that our viewers can go if they want to dive deeper in how to mine out and really use the hidden agenda? Yes, um, there's the hiddenagendabook.com where you'll find the whole site on the book. Um, there's also links to my site, uh, kevinallenpartners.com. There's a whole section called KAPTV when there's videos. So you can, on all these different subjects, on Credo Core and so on. So if you want a little bit more, you can kind of, you know, have a look around. Well, there is a, there is a sample chapter, too, you can download. Okay, fine. So I have to ask, what excites you the most about the transformations that you've created with clients in helping them use the hidden agenda? I think it's the reason I set out this journey a few years ago came from a, a, young, a young woman in, in one of our offices in Stockholm who after a little phone conversation about the hidden agenda of a prospect rings me and goes, we got it! There is no great, yeah, I've won a lot of business in my time, but there's no greater joy than me hearing from people saying, I applied this thing and she gave us the business. That for me is, I, it's just the most wonderful thing. So. If people are, are winning what they achieve or their people are following them in ways that they had hoped to on the strength of this simple experience, I'm a happy guy. So as people dive in and start um, adopting, mining out the hidden agendas, where do they get stuck? Where do they screw it up? Uh, that's a good question. I think um, in two ways. One is, you know, the old expression muscle memory, which is, you know, you kind of pull back to old behavior. So... I think the first thing that tends to fear off is we start going back into sort of functional land and, and, and not connecting that to the hidden agenda. I suppose if I think about whenever I've lost a pitch, and by the way, you know, I know no one dies, you know, so, <laughs> you know, after all, you know, my, my friend Dr. Kassara, he, you know, when he's operating, he can't go, whoops, you know, yeah. this is a bit of a risk game. Next you know? time. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I've lost a pitch, it's because I didn't peel back enough. You know, there's, there's, there's the superficial sort of emotional state, and you can go, oh, okay, great, let me run with that. you got to get to the, that's why I use the word visceral when I talk about the hidden agenda, because there's something very profound that's at work. And I think sometimes I got what I thought was the right clue, I just didn't dig deep enough. Is there any... Um clue or evidence when you have peeled back enough? Mm, that's a very interesting question. I, I would say two. One, I think you talked about it earlier. I think body language. I think you watch. Okay. When people get to something they care about, their whole body changes. It's just, it's extraordinary because you've hit the stuff, the thing that they care about the most. If you ask someone, let's say, oh, uh, the, the Ritz Carlton people, when, we, when they show that wonderful belief system, we are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen, which I adore. But you get them talking about that. Woof! I mean, this is what they believe. Or, or talk, someone talking about their ambition, or what I call real ambition, or someone talking about something that concerns them. Believe you me, you can spot it for sure. I also think it's about the length of time they will devote to the answer. You know, yes, good question. So how do you feel about market share? Well, it's well, but it's up and it's going. Next question. You spike the, the, the hidden agenda, you watch them go. It's almost as if, oh, thanks, okay. <laughs> we got enough now. <laughs> you know, sure. so those two things would be my guess. Okay. Well, and, and I would imagine, too, that that feeling that you get me when they say, you got it, then you're, you're hitting on that hot point for them. Without a doubt. And it becomes a dialogue. It doesn't become... Well, you know, or as opposed to an interrogation, which is just a you know back and forth uh, you know series of questions. Yeah, exactly. So, Kevin, do you have any final words to help our viewers do a better job with the hidden agenda? Well, I guess I sort of alluded to it earlier, and that is, um, let it rip, let it go. You know, uh, don't don't be afraid to embrace the, the, both the the importance and relevance of, of of human emotion in the context of business. And most importantly, what Mr. Genge taught me when he told me to step out behind that blue suit 
and white tie and I am wearing blue. <laughs> See, I did listen to him. It is be yourself because that's what they want to buy. Okay. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. It's made my day. I really appreciate it. Excellent. Well, you've really helped us build a value proposition, not just on the functional, but getting at the real hidden agenda that's going to help us stand out from our competition. I'm really glad. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in and investing in your own success. The Sales Mastery Summit is here to help you never stop learning from the best. Take care.